First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, selling. Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. I want to do this, um, which is very, very interesting, uh, based on our, this debacle as we exit Afghanistan. Uh, James Mir Valdis is a U.S. Army veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and chairman of No One Left Behind. He's done asking for permission to get Afghan families out. What does that mean? Uh, James, good morning. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. So I, 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 I guess I'd start out by the what is going on. How did we, the, the most powerful nation on earth, how has this been our exit from Afghanistan? We are asking the same question. Um, this is, uh, yeah, uh, look, the stories we're getting, though, are, are just uh, are really heartbreaking. Um, yeah. The people, think of not just a few, but 100,000 people trying to get into gates all around the airport. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a crush right now. So how do you, how do you pick out, the, hey, there's an American citizen um, 100 yards back, but there's, 5,000 people between him and, uh, and the gate. I mean, it really is a logistical nightmare. Yeah, um, yeah so that's where we're at. And um, I, I almost feel like, and I, I understand this has been a, uh, a, the longest war that we fought in, and it seems that at this point, if Afghanistan can't put together, well, we put together for them a military that, that can't defend itself, then maybe they don't want to be a, a nation. Uh, I understand all of that. But the exit, um, the exit needs to be. Uh, would, you would have thought if we've had all this time to plan that the exit would be uh, would have been planned out. We wouldn't go through this, and I do get it. But if you have that many people, wouldn't you do it? Wouldn't you start have doing start evacuating long ago? I, I would think. Yeah, we were. We, <laughs> sir, we've uh, we've been talking to three administrations, seven congresses seven secretaries of defense, and we're now on our fifth secretary of state talking about this issue. We provided recommendations, exactly what you just mentioned, back in January 2020. And it is just, I'm still trying to get my head around uh, why we're, why this wasn't planned for it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it, it really is uh, embarrassing. But to that point, what's not embarrassing is just the, the amount of work that the volunteers that no one left behind and yeah. other veterans groups are doing. Standing, jumping in, talking to uh, thousands of, SIV, uh, of allies and SIV recipients on WhatsApp and Gmail, trying to coordinate with them to get them to the airport. Yeah. I mean, it is something the nation can be very proud of. So explain what that means. Uh, when you say uh, done asking for permission uh, to get families out, what does that mean? Yeah, that was the week before the evacuation. So, sir, we had um, dozens of families reach out to us who had visas in hand. So the, the embassy had already given them visas, but they, the embassy did not tell them, hey, you're going to be on a evacuation flight number four. You're going to be on evacuation number five. So these families were waiting and waiting and waiting. Traditionally, uh, the process is they get a visa, and then they're supposed to hear from the International Organization of Migration. That's a U.N. entity to do the uh, scheduling of the flight. I just want your listeners to know that those flights through the U.N., those aren't a grant. They're a loan. So these families previously would show up in America at least $10,000 already in debt. We have a donor who, who saw this, the slow pace of things and said, that's it. Put these people on commercial flights. I'll pay for them. They shouldn't have a dime. We got five families out uh, right before everything went bad. We had another 50 scheduled. 
So if the airport can resume civilian air operations with Turkish Air, Qatar Air, we'll, we'll continue doing that. But they've got to... They've got to alleviate the stress at the gates at the moment. James, were there a lot of families ahead of time that you spoke with that could sense that this was coming? You know, it's not like Biden hadn't been announcing that he was going to be doing this for uh, several months leading up to it actually happening. Were a lot of families getting nervous and, and getting the sense this this was going to happen this way? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, based on the email traffic and the Facebook messages, uh, yeah, they <clears throat> it, it was it was a it was. A, they, they didn't want to feel that way, but they started to yeah. realize that the situation was not what they were going to expect. Oh, they, they realized that, oh, wow, the, the U.S. may not know what it's doing, especially about us. So what do we do next? Yeah. And that's why uh, no one left behind. Well, actually, we got a quote. For, um, there was an Army civil affairs officer who was overseas a few years ago, and, uh, I mean, this, this is what struck me. Uh, he found out about no one left behind from the Afghans who told him, Hey, we gave up on the U.S. government a long time ago. No one left behind is the only thing giving us hope. That just shook me to the core. Yeah, um, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in, in your, uh, your the, the short bio they wrote for you here, uh, it says, quote, We have been defeated, and the tens of thousands of Afghans who bravely supported the Americans for two de- decades await their executioners. Um, huh. Well, uh, that's, I'll, I'll need to talk to him about that. Um <laughs> It, it that to that point. Look, I, I as a veteran, it I don't I don't want to say defeat. I don't want to say loss. I know people are feeling that very viscerally, deeply. It's very emotional. Um, uh, my master sergeant put it this way: you know, on a bigger picture, the United States has now not won two wars in the last decade, um, yeah. it, and that's because of political decisions. Uh, both in Iraq and both in Afghanistan, uh, and political timelines. It, it's very frustrating. Um, but, yes, uh, w- we're going to keep working and making sure that that outcome does not happen to our allies. Uh, at least they know that we're here for them, yeah. and uh, we're doing our best. Uh, interesting. Uh, and the other part is you were there. Is Was Afghanistan winnable? Uh, you know, we're trying to impose our democracy on people who for centuries – have not experienced anything like what, and in fact, much of what they've been taught in their religion uh, teaches something completely different. Was it ever winnable? Very good question. Uh, and did we ever define winning? Right. right? So, right. in the first month of after nine eleven, militarily we rolled through. Yes. Um, but it was everything after that, and yeah, that. Yeah. And so I was over there in two thousand eleven, and I had asked my senior leaders and said, hey, "Okay." You know, sir, um, sirs, what what are you hearing? What's what's the plan? Yeah. And now what are we in doing? 2000, in 2011, I was told there is none, and that was super. Disturb- that was very disturbing. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of winning, look, um, uh, when I was I was in Bagram, and uh, the fact that that base was given over um, uh, with a larger air runway and everything, that really just highlights again how things were not just not even considered. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, to this point, so when I was there in 2011, 2012, I mean, we were, in, I know, uh, we were inside the um, the perimeter. Uh, we had, working in the prison, working with the Taliban, who knew this day was coming. By the way, right. they they just wanted to. Yep, they said, "Hey, we're just going to hang out. Uh, we're going to wait until you leave, and then and then, then we'll just be get here. ready." And that yeah. that day came. But so um, my point is, inside the perimeter, it was 2011. Immediately outside the perimeter, it was 1391, and people were happy. Yeah. They wanted. They wanted to live that way. And right. who are we to tell them who are they we? should do better? Who are we yes. to tell them that this is, you need to, you need to change? Conform. And very interesting, and I'll just make this note, and I'd love your opinion. Uh, after World War II, the Germans, um, the, there was the will of the people to change. Uh, the Japanese, the will of the people to change and move to democracy. And that does not exist today. You need the will of the people, or you can. We can have the greatest military on earth, which I believe we do, and you can't accomplish changing the will of the people. Agreed. Uh, James Mirvaldis, I appreciate your service tremendously, and the fact that you're doing what you're doing right now. You're just not coming home. You're helping others get home as as well. That's just awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, everyone can go to. SaveOurAllies.org to learn more.
All right. Thank you so much, James. Thank you for your service. <clears throat> wow. I, I think one problem you have in Afghanistan is the same problem that we had in Vietnam. You don't know who's a friend and who's an enemy. Right. And if you look at all of these Taliban goons, these, all these young males who are doing this, I think, because they're thinking of their future virgins or, you know. Right. They've been, they've been, they have been indoctrinated, in, indoctrinated and, and to believe that this is – or you can take any woman you want right now anyway. Mm-hmm. Why wait? Right. You know? So right. I think that's why they're doing it. But you can't tell who's who. And I think there's only one real solution. And we have to hunt the Taliban like Rambo. Give them yeah. the war you won't <clears throat> believe. Well, it, it is interesting that now all of a sudden Taliban, the Taliban will be a, uh, a more traditional nation. Um, yeah. And all in one place, you wonder what, uh, what, what comes next. Um, you, I want to believe that our military has a bigger plan that we don't know about. <laughs> yeah, and I would maybe hope so. I'm Let's living so. in La La Land, where <laughs> I just I always feel like um, the smartest people have a plan. They're just not sharing it with me yet. The 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 most able people in the in the world, our military. Yeah, there's a plan. They just can't share it with us yet. If you look at the expressions on Millie and Austin's face faces, they look like I cannot believe. I'm having to stand here and make this case. Yeah. Well, especially because a lot of reports are showing that uh, a lot of the military brass, top brass, warned President Biden that this was going to happen. And right. for whatever reason. Well, and there's evidence of that, that the warning know, came 30 days before that this was going to uh, going to happen. It was going to happen no matter when we left. I think it was. And, yeah. and you know what? To say this wasn't going to happen under another administration, it was going to happen. But the thing um, about it is, is we, we took the military out first, whereas they should have been the ones to leave last. Uh, and we had a year of planning, uh, a year to plan this. Hello? <laughs> Something doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, But anyway, a guy like this, uh, there he's still working to get people out. I mean, that's yeah. pretty incredible. And how about the donor? And his comment, his comment that it was 2011 inside the... Uh, Behind the, the, the lines. Yeah. But once you crossed over, it was 1391. I yeah. mean, think about wow. an yeah. ant. And that's exactly what. And they didn't want to change. Right. They're perfectly happy living that life. In the 14th mm-hmm. century. And, and who are we to tell them, no, you need democracy. Yeah. Just look at how happy we are. There's another uh, radio host who I won't mention who is a national radio host who has raised $20 million uh, as of the other day, I heard. Uh, to get uh, Afghani Christians out because mm. they are being specifically yep. targeted. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, anyone uh, that has anything to do with uh, Christianity or the West um, is in danger. Anybody who had any ties to the United States, in danger. And there are stories of, of if, if the person who had ties to the United States uh, maybe assisted our military in some way, yeah. if they get out, yeah. It's their family that is uh, that is targeted. They're going around painting X's on doors like yeah. Passover. Yeah. 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 yeah, terrible. Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.